everyone hear me all right? Yep, sound sound is really good for me, y'all. She's coming in through her phone today, okay, so um, she's dialed in. So if we have phone is or sound issues, we'll we'll block and tackle as we have them. Um, well, hey Tony, it's good to hear your voice. Thank you. Good to be here. All right, um, we're gonna do something a little different here. I promised uh, in the emails I sent out to everyone that we would uh, just do a quick uh, a quick intro for those of you who don't know Tony. Uh, she started trading in 1997. And I'm going to let her talk a little bit about how she got started and uh, a little hiccup in her trading and her time in the market and then where she is now. So, Tony, um, 1997, talk about that and what was going on when you first started in this game. <laughs> okay, wow. We are going way back to sort of the wild west of online trading. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. I was actually studying to become an archaeologist. Can you imagine? Uh, me as a forensic, an forensic anthropologist and took a little bit of a swing going into the market. So what happened was a partner wanted to trade and uh, I helped him set up his system and uh, I was helping set up an account and talking to one of the guys at one of the brokerage firms, you know, Wall Street, you know, you know the type. And uh, he told me, well, if you don't know these simple questions, I'm I'm asking you, then you have no business doing this. <laughs> and I'm like, whoa, excuse me. Uh, so, yeah, I kind of ended up going into the markets as a bit of a challenge. I, you know, I, I kind of took that as him throwing down the glove at me and uh, started working with reading charts. Now, back then, there really wasn't a lot out there for information, for education in particular. There was a couple of books, um, a couple of really, really basic books on technical analysis, things like buy a three-bar pullback. Uh, <laughs> you know, I, if you've been around for a while, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, it was basically the preschool version of technical analysis and then a lot of stuff on fundamental analysis, which is really big. And for me, I really wasn't interested in trying to get into all the fundamental side. I was trained as an artist. That was what I knew. I could pick out patterns. So I tackled the charts. And I took the very basic things that they told me, you know, the three-bar pullbacks. And it doesn't take you very long to realize that when you're just buying a three- to five-bar pullback into something like a 20-period moving average, a lot of them will work, and a lot of them will fail, and a lot of them will fail very badly. So I took my scientific mentality and approach and went and analyzed all these trades to look at, well, what are the things that they have in common and it didn't take me very long to realize that it goes beyond just looking at how many days of correction you have or you know what type of moving average supports you have it's kind of how everything fits together so I developed a system of market analysis where I'm basically looking at what I call the building blocks of price development where I'm looking at different things like momentum and volume, support and resistance levels, and how they all interact and come together. So my presentation today is looking at part of that. And I'm going to start with some of the basics and then kind of go on forward from there. Can you um, guys all can you? I can oh, see. Sorry, go ahead. That's okay. Um, Y'all, one, one thing I want Tony to touch on today while she's in here with y'all is um, a point she made to me when we were talking about this a couple of days ago is that, you know, trading is never a straight path. There's always a start and a stop. Um, you know, mm -hmm. we've all blown an account up. We've all had uh, family issues. There's always a reason where you can uh, have to step away from the market and whether it's for a month or uh, six months or a year or whatever, um, you know, you took some time off from trading and you came back. And so, you know, I, I really want them to understand that that there's there that that bike is always there to get back on, and the market's exactly. always going to give you opportunity if you if you know where to look. You just got to know where to look and 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 be uh, disciplined. So yeah, I'm going to go ahead and let um, you get started. Talk a little bit about that, and then you go ahead and get started. Yeah, I'll be, yeah, definitely. 
So basically, um, you know, using my style of market analysis and what I developed over the years was a system that I started to be able to apply to pretty much every market. So I originally came into this as a swing trader. I was looking to hold things three to five days, sometimes a couple of weeks, got to be really good at it really quickly. And I realized that you know, looking at multiple time frames, I could increase my edge. I could do even better. Um, looking at individual characteristics that were going into patterns as they were developing played a big role. So I moved from swing trading into day trading, into Forex, into futures, basically every market under the sun. And I started trading them all. And it just depends upon what my schedule was like in a given day, you know, what markets were the most active. And I found that it really didn't matter where I put my focus. Uh, the strategies translated over all of the time frames and over all of the markets. So I know a lot of people will come in and they will think, okay, I want to trade just such and such market. And they find that it's it's not quite what they wanted. So you, it can take a little bit of hit and miss to figure out you know, what your little niche is and where you're most comfortable in the market. And as Jeanette said, I got hit with some very unexpected um, event. I had been to a speaking engagement in Dallas. And on the flight back, I had incredibly massive head pressure as we were descending. And it turned out it was a precursor to a cerebrospinal fluid leak. Basically what that is is that uh, the cabin pressure on the plane wasn't regulated well, created a cyst on my spine, and we were moving cross country the next week, and all the lifting and moving ruptured that cyst. So all that fluid that protects your brain and your central nervous system, gone. Um, my detectable levels of uh, CSF pressure was zero. So they life lighted me from Ohio to uh, Cedar Sinai in Los Angeles for emergency surgery with George Clooney's surgeon, actually, because he had the same situation happen to him on a movie set a few years earlier. So I, I guess we have that one degree of separation there from George Clooney. <laughs> but anyways, so it kind of took me out of commission for a while. And that is something that you can absolutely not plan for whatsoever. And we all have things like that that happen. You know, some some of my traders have lost a spouse or even, God forbid, a child, or some of them have had, you know, their own illness illnesses that they've had to work through. And it's really scary sometimes coming back to something like a career in the markets where things move so fast, you know, regulations change, markets change as far as like what comes in on favor, what goes out of favor, and trading platforms change, the technology changes. So it's always a little bit uh, nerve-wracking when you're first getting started. But the thing is, with my style of market analysis, that didn't change. That was exactly the same as it always was, works just as well as it always has. And that's you know what I want to show you today. So when we go through my class, we're going to be looking at some samples of charts that uh, were trades that I took before I got sick. And then we're going to be looking at some samples of trades that have just unfolded recently as well. That way, you can really see that there is that that um, that that lineal development with this, where you really you don't have to start all over. You don't have to start from fresh. Yeah, it might take you a little bit of time to get up to speed on a, a trading platform if you you're a little bit rusty. But it's something that you can pretty much jump back into fairly quickly. And that's what I've been doing. 
And that's what I want to share with you. Uh, and I hope that you pick up on a lot of great techniques in today's class that you can use and apply to your own trading. One of the things that I want to guarantee to you is that you don't have to have a lot of fancy systems or fancy indicators. You don't have to pay a lot of money for outside software or anything like that with the system that I use. It's all based upon things that really, once you start to be able to visualize them, it's just a matter of going over them over and over and sort of drilling them into yourself. You know, if you, if any of you have ever done something like uh, Taekwondo, you know, a lot of the steps, it's just really re repetition, repetition over and over and over again until you get it down. And that's what this is as well. So we're going to start today by looking at some target issues and how to establish targets in a position and one of the techniques and tools that we're going to use are Fibonacci expansion levels. Now, I have an entire mentoring course that is Fibonacci Mastery where I go into every single minute detail you can think of and how you know, they work together. But today, we're just going to focus on one very simple tool so that you have something that you can use and take away from this class right away. Um, basically, we're looking at two things. We're going to be looking at momentum and the role momentum has and plays in the security space. And then how to use extra tools and techniques like Fibonacci levels or even moving averages or any other uh, indicator that you want to use and how those things can work together to give you uh, an accurate target as well as how to manage a target if it's unfolding in a way you weren't expecting. So sometimes you might have a target level like 100 and you're thinking, oh, it's going to get there within uh, half an hour and it's just not shaping up to make it. So what do you do with that position as it's unfolding? Do you do you just bail on it? Do you, figure, do you want to adjust your stops? What do you do? So we'll be looking at some of the details of that. And I'm going to share with you one of my favorite strategies. Actually, you're going to see a couple of favorite strategies here as we go through this. So let's go in and dive in here with some of the very, very basics. I never know the skill level of a group that I'm going to be speaking to. Sometimes I end up having a pretty good mix where we've got a lot of newer traders and then some that have been around for, you know, a decade or more. And so I still like to go and cover some of the basics, even if it might be something that you have seen before and are familiar with. Now, momentum or pace, uh, when I first came into the markets and first te started teaching my uh, system of market analysis, this was something nobody covered. It was as if it was just hidden behind a veil and nobody had any realization that it would, had a, an important role to play, which once you realize what it is, the fact that people paid so little attention to it for so long is just crazy to me because it just becomes so obvious. And I think that you're going to find that that's going to be the case here too. And it really took a while for this to, to sink in. I've been teaching and trading for about 20 years now. And it was really within the last decade that we started seeing more and more people really realizing how important momentum is. You have a lot of momentum indicators. But looking at pure momentum, not relying on indicators, just the price action itself is really all you need to see some of these movements. So let's look here. This is just a really uh, generic chart, and it's something that I have used for years to explain the basics of momentum. And we're going to go through this one fairly quickly because we have a lot of material to cover here today. But basically, the idea behind momentum is if this is a stock here, and can you guys see my pointer? Let's make sure you can all see my cursor. 
Yes? All right, perfect. Okay. So if we are looking here at A, what you'll notice is that this is a really typical bull flag. You know, we had a nice upside move, pretty strong upside move, and then we have a more gradual, slower pullback. Now, when the momentum is slower on a pullback or correction, that allows for stronger continuation moves to take place. So with this slow pullback and slow correction here with A, we had a really strong continuation move on the upside with B. Now in C, momentum is starting to shift. We have a little bit of a stronger pullback. It's a little bit more gradual, and it even corrects a little bit further compared to what we saw on A. The result is often that momentum can slow coming out of that. Now where these happen in a trend is a big factor. It's something we don't have time to get into today, but I have many courses, including free classes on my website where you can go and check out videos on that, uh, where this slowdown happens more commonly when you're, when you're coming towards the end of a trend or you're just starting out with a new trend, that can be the case too. For example, if this is coming off lows and we're starting to reverse off of those lows, that can happen. So with the momentum shifting here and a more gradual move on the outside, that can allow for a stronger breakdown. And now we run into kind of a period of congestion where this momentum is strong on the downside and it's strong on the upside. It almost retakes those previous highs. This V type of formation means that you're probably going to have stronger support the next time it tries to retest that previous low. So traders that are looking for bear flags, for example, coming off of a, a secondary move like this, they're going to have a little bit of a harder time getting through that previous low. What can often happen when it does break that low is it will pause there before it tries to do a continuation. So you might get a couple of bars rest and then a continuation move. But it's really looking at the momentum on different time frames that's going to help you determine what is going to happen next in the security. And again, it doesn't matter if this is uh, the euro dollar or if you're looking at Apple. It's all going to be the same when it comes to momentum. So let's switch over here and look at another way of looking at momentum. When we look at trends in the security, you have a lot of back and forth action within any sort of wave. So when you're looking at, okay, what is the overall momentum of that move, it's good to transect that trend move. And that gives you kind of the bigger picture of how momentum is shifting. Because overall, here we see a lot of strong upside moves. It's only this last move here that starts to slow, but the overall trend starts to slow even before that happens because our highs are starting to make some Look, some smaller differences between those highs. Here we have wider range, wider prices between the highs, and then here we have lesser degree of price change between those highs, and that shifts that overall momentum. If we look at what this looks like on an actual chart or actual security, here's how I've transacted these trend moves. So basically kind of wanting to go through the middle of most of the price action. If you have really extreme tails like this, those should generally be ignored. Uh, look for what's happening in the overall trend. And when we look at setting targets on trades that are based upon these trends moves, we're going to be looking at two types of momentum. We're going to be looking at the momentum of the overall trend and previous trend moves going into a setup, and we're going to be dropping down and looking at the smaller sections within those trends as well. So the upside momentum, for example, here is pretty strong, and then we get to the very end, and this is where oftentimes you'll start to see that momentum shift. For example, down here in C, the momentum starts to shift a little bit slower. So. Over here, we have a good example of, of the congestion like we saw in the template. It has some pretty decent upside. V type of strategies going on, these Vs, 
those Vs often will lead to a longer trading range. So when I'm trading pivots, I like to try to get those pivots that are the first two, sometimes the third pivot going into a trading range or channel. After that, things often get sloppy, and that's the point where I start to look at for breaks of those trading channels. So here's the overall momentum of this kind of sloppier move. But if you look at the individual moves, you'll see that those are still pretty strong back and forth. It's really when things start to get towards the end where there's a little bit of a shift in that moment. The momentum slows as it's going back up that second time. Now, the ideal situation, of course, is that this overall move would slow, and that could lead to a really strong breakdown right away. In this case, it went all the way back to the top, so it had to struggle again getting back to these previous lows before it finally broke and led to another type of congestion. Again, strong back and forth moves, but here's the overall momentum. The overall momentum of it is basically a trading channel where you're looking for a break coming out of that trading channel. And my guess here is that there was some sort of news happening overnight, probably earnings or something that led to that big gap down the next day. Here's an example of where we look at how momentum plays a factor in target timing. So when we're looking at a bull flag, this is a trade that we had a couple of years ago. I pulled from a pre previous presentation. It, we're going to show you a, a current one from this week here in just a minute. But here we had a bull flag, and I like to use these smaller moves to go ahead and get into the trade. Here's that momentum or pace for the correction. Here's the overall momentum for the upside, and here's the overall momentum for the continuation. Now, when you have a continuation move where the momentum is building very similar to what you had going into a flag or even into a sideways trading channel or some sort of parallelogram, the target zone that I look for is going to be an equal or measured move. This is where A is starting to be mimicked with B. You have a pretty good chance of hitting 100% equal move. Now, one thing to keep in mind when you're looking at target zones is you are looking at a target zone. You're not looking at an exact price. So the 100% um, expansion, for example, will give you an exact price. But look for price action as it goes into that zone. And this is where momentum shifting can again play a role. In this case, our overall momentum continued to be pretty strong and pretty comparable to what we saw with the initial rally. It did shift a little bit here towards the end, and that can tell you that you are running out of steam, and it's a really good idea to look for the smaller time frames to take gains on that position. Now, on the other hand, if momentum starts to increase coming out of that channel and out of that base, then you have higher odds of getting much more than that equal or measured move and that it could hit that measured move target much more quickly. Now, sometimes what will happen is it'll come up, hit that measured move so quickly, stall their pause for just a second before it pushes through it because it still recognizes it as a resistance level. It just has a lot more momentum going for it, so it can get pushed through that level so much more quickly. Now, here's one we're going to revisit again as well. And this was actually a, a day trade that I had in Adobe. I was playing morning momentum. And it was based upon a cup of handle formation. You can kind of see that here. Here's the rounded cup, and then here's the handle, which has a two-way correction within it as well. So I bought this, and I had a target level up here. I was basically just looking for a measured move for this rally here which put the target right around here, which is also corresponding to some opening zone levels. What ended up happening, though, 
was it got off to an okay start. So that was great. But then you'll notice that it started to struggle here. It put in a high, put in a slightly higher high, and then went in for a third high. Now this, for me, is basically a kiss of death for this type of strategy. It usually means that we're looking for a reversal. So this pattern that actually developed here in B with the three highs is one that I created that I call a momentum reversal. And uh, basically you're looking for three evenly spaced highs and that triggers a short. So this was a position that even though I entered it as a buy, I exited it and reversed the position coming out of it to go short because of that change in how this was following through. And we're gonna look at this here in more detail as well. So here is where we are going to start to add these Fibonacci expansion levels. Now, I'm using TradeStation, so you can use the drawing tool on TradeStation, which is Basically, it's under drawing Fibonacci and price extension lines, but there's also a toolbar that you can have on the left where you can just click on it and add the, the Fibonacci extension levels as well. So when you're drawing Fibonacci, this is something that can be really tricky for a lot of people because they'll have a lot of different levels that they'll say that they can use to add those lines. So. This one here was pretty straightforward. We had a high, we had a low, and then we had a third high. So Fibonacci expansion levels are a little bit different than the retracement levels and uh, extension because with those, you're just using two, two points. You've got a high and a low, and then you're looking at retracements and then extensions past those retracement levels. With an expansion, we're looking at this high, the low, and then the high within the pattern that you are trading. So in this case, this is an avalanche. Again, another strategy um, I developed years ago, and it's taking place within a head and shoulders, which is something that is uh, a much more well-known pattern. So here's the left shoulder, the head, in the right shoulder. Now an avalanche is basically this first level of congestion that can kick off a new downtrend. So you see it happening at highs. And what I generally want to see is a move to the downside that is stronger than average. And then congestion, preferably not past that 50% point. This one did go a little bit higher than I would usually like to see, but it's still that held that zone pretty well. And this is just a really recent example. This was actually a trade from Thursday. Um, I believe it was Thursday. And it set up in the afternoon. I lose track of my dates here this week a little bit. <laughs> I've been so busy. But yeah, so here was the, the trigger. And I started looking for this because we were coming into some other major support zones here. Uh, which so you can see price support here, previous lows. And I'll show you a Fibonacci level here in a second as well. And the overall momentum here, you'll notice if I cut this in half right through the middle, it's slower on the upside than this overall move on the downside. We did have some upside momentum little spikes, but it didn't really amount to anything. We had a lot of tails on the top and congestion again back in here before this trading range broke. I actually dropped down to a smaller time frame for taking this position so you can see the, the data a little bit easier on the smaller time frame. I might have that smaller chart up here in the next slide. But when I'm looking at this for the expansion level, I first click here at the high, second click here at the low, third click at the last high within that channel, so here, first low, last high. And then that gives us a target level down by 1.079 as the 100% expansion. What you'll notice here is that it hit that literally on the mark. Like to the dot, it hit that 100% expansion. Honestly, 
I was not expecting that to happen or I knew that it would be very tricky if it did happen because this started hitting some other resist, other support levels in here and the momentum was starting to shift. So this got off to a really good start. I was thinking, yes, perfect. And a lot of these continuation moves have two waves of continuation. So here was the initial one. I was just waiting for that second one to get into that target level. But when it went in for that move to go into that second level, that second wave of downside, you'll see the momentum started to shift. So we had that initial move, and then we had the slowdown here. If we go and look at this on the smaller time frame, you'll see that shift even better. So I drew these expansions using that smaller correction. So the original expansion was based upon this move back here to here and then down. So here I added the extension to this one. Here we have the pivot, which is the high of the avalanche, the low, the corrective move, and then looking at those extensions coming out of that. And here is where we see that shift in momentum really clear. This level right here, right there, was the 100% extension for the larger avalanche pattern. In this case, that zone is also the 76.4% extension for this continuation move. But with the shift in the momentum, once it hit the 38.2% level and this previous low, the momentum began to slow. We have a lot of overlap from one bar to the next. And for me, that is a red flag. It tells me that, okay, this trend is going to struggle. We are probably not going to have as good of a chance of hitting that larger target that I really wanted. I might need to start to take some of my gains off and manage this position more tightly. So usually what happens is I have a, um, a target level on the books for most of my trades, just in case something happens, you know, if I have to step out of the room or my internet freaks out on me or something like that. And I want something on there to protect me. So I do them as bracket orders where I have my stops in place, which the, the stops I usually keep on the book are a little bit wider in general than where I will manually use it. And then I'll have my target level on the books as well. So in this example, I did have a target level just shy of that 1.079. Now, what happened, though, was I noticed this momentum shifting. So I went ahead and took some of the position off as it was doing the shift, left the rest of it to see if it would get hit, and there just were not enough trades there. So even though it hit my target, it hit exactly what I wanted, exactly what I was expecting. I'll show you the, the chart exact. You can see right there, right at it, but it didn't get filled. So then I go into management mode. Okay, sometimes it will retest the level and you can go and look for a retest, but you gotta watch the momentum again for that retest. So here, it bounced up pretty quickly, but then the momentum shifted again, and this time it shifted even slower than that previous one. So for me, that served as my trailing stop point, and when that channel broke, that's when I ended up just getting off of the rest of the position. So, you know, if everything had gone really smoothly, it would have executed my order at that 100%, would have gotten everything out there. But because of the momentum shifting, I had to pay more attention to it and look to take a little bit less on the trade, but not risk more of the position thinking, oh, I'm just going to hold it and hopefully eventually it gets there. That's something that a lot of people will run into. They'll just keep holding on thinking, well, maybe it will still retest. Uh, maybe I'll, I'll still have another chance. But if you have a lot of other things that are 
as uh, support levels in that same zone, you have the momentum shifting, then you need to go and take a look at what are those additional risks. In this case, here's another type of Fibonacci. These are the Fibonacci fans, and I've been using these a lot more in recent years because they help me identify great places to look for things like bull flags and avalanches and uh, levels to enter as well as exit a position. And you can see here our original avalanche strategy and the continuation. And you'll notice that right as that momentum is changing, it's also hitting that zone between the 76.4 and 78.6% Fibonacci um, fan level. And it's a lot of price support from some of these previous lows and highs and zones of congestion. So all of those are working against it. Even though it hit that exact 100% level, it still struggled in here. So it's good to have an idea of what that target is, but if you can't get it, you still need to be able to manage the position using logic and not just you know, hoping that, well, maybe it's going to retest it. If the momentum is changing on those smaller time frames and you're actually starting to see little reversal strategies um, picking up and taking place, then it's a really good idea to use those to go ahead and exit the position. Now, when I'm managing a position manually and I even though I'll have something on the books, a lot of times I'll go in and uh, if I get there in time, I'm paying attention here, and I'll go in and I'll watch for that momentum as it's coming into the target. So if it is starting to slow or I'm starting to see there's just not as much activity there, then I'll go ahead and take my gains at that level that is in that zone for my target just because I know that looking at exact numbers, exact Fibonacci levels, those are so popular that it can be really hard to get a fill at that exact level and they can hold so precisely that if you go for that precise number, you have a better chance of not getting filled at all. I know we're getting some questions in here and I'll take those here in just a second. Um, here's just another breakdown kind of showing you how all of those levels are starting to come into play. And there's that 100% there so that you can see where that level was. And then here's that congestion that really told us things are starting to shape up and things are starting to change. Now, let me answer just a couple of questions before we go on to the next portion. Let's see. Can you use FIBS on any time frame, or do you use multiple FIBs on different time frames? You absolutely can use FIBs on any time frame. You can use them on pick charts. You can use them on monthly charts, and I do use them on every chart. Uh, the Fibonacci Mastery course that I did, uh, I actually did a 10-week, 10-week, uh, I don't know what you call it, a boot camp type course. Basically, it was like a college level type course. Uh, 10 weeks of just focusing on my entire trading system where I went from looking at these building blocks and then building upon those building blocks, going into individual strategies and everything, multiple time frames, multiple markets, really the most in-depth course I've done in my life. I'm, I, you can't tell I'm very proud of it. Um, but, uh, yeah, you can absolutely use them on any time frame and any security. So, uh, John, 2K2S, I don't get it. It looks good in hindsight, but how does that predict the next rally or sell off target? Uh, that is a very, very good question. So, one of the things that I've loved to do over the years, and I know many of you here today have been with me for years, is the first 10, 12 years I traded, I also ran a trading room every single day. So, 
we got to look at every single thing as it was happening. You so you can't make that up. <laughs> so it was really kind of the school of hard knocks of how to do something real time and show how it works. And part of the Fibonacci Mastery course actually is uh, a number of hours where we recorded the market live and I showed traders how to use the things in the course in the market as it was unfolding on those days. So I'm a huge proponent of teaching during live markets and helping traders understand that you know, that things do change in reality as the markets are unfolding. And we're going to get to, you know, go back over that Adobe example here. And there's also another one in Facebook that I want to show you of just how things do change as uh, the market is unfolding and how you need to change with it. When you're plotting Fibonacci fans, what you do is you use the low of a trend move and the high of that trend move. And that will splay the fan open over upcoming price. Now let's move forward here and I will come back and answer your questions as well. I just have a lot of material I want to share with you guys. So I want to make sure that you guys can understand this uh, really well. When we look at the Fibonacci extension levels, something that is interesting and confusing for a lot of people is when you get into a trading channel or a trading range like this, okay, we've got multiple highs and multiple lows. Well, how do you draw the lines in those circumstances? This is something that there's a lot of debate over. and there's really two ways that I recommend doing it that work the best from my experience. And I'm going to show you the first one here, and then I'll tell you about the second one. And so the previous one was very simple. We just went from a high to a low to a high. Very, very easy. Well, in this one, we can go from below to a zone, where the zone has multiple little highs. and lows that are changing because this is a parallelogram and it's kind of like a bull flag, kind of like a trading range base, except that it's slanted a little bit on the upside. So when you're dealing with a situation like that where you're going into a channel, usually what I will do is I will take the first high before the momentum slows and then I'll take the last low as it's about to break. And that will give me the target zones that I'm going to be watching for. Now, another way you can do this, this is which would look a little bit different, is this two here. You can take that and put that at the highest point in this parallelogram, which would actually be over here, the, the pivot high just before three. And then you would go back so that three would be the lowest within that trading range or trading channel. And what that does is that gives you that entire channel as the range. And sometimes the highs and the lows are hit very early on in the trading range, and sometimes they're not. But that gives you both the high of the parallelogram and the low of the parallelogram. So when you're looking at a measured move, it's a very clear-cut measured move coming out of that. And if you go and do that on your own here a little bit later, you'll find that the levels really line up pretty close. There's a little bit of difference, but it's nothing substantial. So when you're using these Fibonacci extension levels, they're going to be hitting those same zones. You might have like a few ticks above or a few ticks below, but it's going to be pretty much on par for those levels. So here is another example. This is actually another throwback trade because Facebook is something that I took as a long-term position um, back before my injury and it played out incredibly well throughout 2004 and or 
sorry, 2014, and then fell into that trading channel going into 2015. And this is where we got a continuation move. Now, unfortunately, I was not around to trade this continuation on this one, but we will look on that one here on, on Facebook in a second. Uh, so I wanted to show you here, though, that the initial upside move that I had had a continuation move that formed, which is a very typical two-way correction plus continuation. And the momentum coming out of it is pretty strong. So when we compare the initial momentum coming out of that channel, out of that parallelogram, to the initial momentum going into the trend ahead of it, it tells us that, okay, you know what? This has a pretty good shot of hitting that 100% equal move target, that 100% ext extension level. So that becomes a very ideal place to put it, but there's always going to be these levels of pause or resistance on the way. Now, one idea that you can use to kind of help you out is if you look at a previous trend move, you'll, number, you'll notice a number of waves. Oftentimes, the number of waves you have before a, a period of congestion, I'm sorry, will, will be mimicked coming out of that. So we had three waves on the upside. One, two, three. And the corrections are lasting about a quarter. So coming out of this, you could expect, okay, let's say three waves coming out of that. So here's the first one. Correction lasts about a quarter. Second one, correction lasts about a quarter. There's the third one. Now, momentum is starting to shift here. It's getting a little bit scary because it has taken almost as long for this entire move to get to this 76.4 level as it did this entire move here from the lows in 2013 to the highs at the end of 2014. All about just about a year, maybe just a little bit shy of that. And so looking at that, then it becomes a matter of, okay, is this where I really need to be taking gains or do I still have a shot at that 100% extension? Dropping down to the smaller time frames can help because what you'll see here is that even though we get a bit of a shift in momentum, you know, the highs are breaking to a lesser degree, the upside momentum here at the end and even within this is still average to stronger than average. So People are getting a little bit hesitant, but there's no real commitment to a reversal yet. And this would be a case of implement uh, some trailing stops. You know, you might want to protect a little bit of your position at that level, but I wouldn't bail on the entire position. On the other hand, when it starts to move and approaches this level here, D, that 100%, this is where I look to exit these. And we have a really great clue here, too, because we have, again, the three highs evenly spaced with that momentum shift. It goes up here, shifts momentum into it, and again, barely test that 100% level. So you're actually looking to be taking gains as it's approaching it. If we look at it, in terms of how the overall momentum played out and how long it took, here was the original move and the upside momentum on the original move. I just copied that line and pasted it over here. So what you can see is that it really ended up being the same momentum and about the same amount of time too. Now let's drop down and look at some of the details here. This is where Facebook can be a little bit tricky for those that uh, like to swing trade it. Has a little, little bit of a bad reputation with a, a lot of whiplash lately. 
but it does offer some really great opportunities as well. And one of my favorite types of opportunities is that momentum reversal strategy I told you about a few moments ago. And you can see that playing out here as it's coming into that 100% expansion level, or extension level rather, where we have momentum finally starting to shift. So here it was still strong as it was hitting 76.4, but as it's pulling up this time around, it's slowing. So here's the overall momentum of each of these previous moves. And here it's slowing. We get that grad more gradual upside, and then this channel here with the three highs. And volume is dropping off as well. And that's sort of like a death trigger for this type of a move because it's telling us that people are getting very, very leery about holding on to this. So not only does this give you an exit trigger for those larger, longer-term positions, but it's also creating a reversal strategy. So you can literally take gains on this type of strategy and then reverse it. Now, this, in this case, you're just looking at a swing trade strategy because the setup for that strategy is just over a course of a couple of weeks here. But the trigger gave a pretty nice move all the way back down to that 61.8% level here. Now, it did hold that, it's pulling back up, retesting the 100% here, but it's going to be much harder to break through this without putting in a longer correction than we saw each of these previous waves. And that is something that I call time development. So the time development back in here, after the initial run-up that we saw going into 2014, this time development allowed for this move. What we need now is a similar time development to allow for another larger trend. And it might not happen. It could just end up rolling it over giving a larger correction. It's kind of a little too early to see because we have that U, which is basically a V. So we're going to have some highs and lows within this channel here for a little while here, I, I suspect. This momentum is a little bit stronger here at the very end than it was with this momentum reversal. So it might push it a little bit more, but we're just going to have to wait and see. What I really like to see is where the shift has a very distinct shift like that. If it's still looking like it's still moving up at an average to stronger than average pace, then even though you might get a momentum reversal, it's probably going to be more like a scalp, like an intraday type of trade, not, not as easy to get a swing trade out of it. Whereas if that shift is taking place more gradually, you're more likely to get these stronger breakdowns. So let's jump back, actually, to that Adobe from a few years ago and show you how that plays out. This is basically the exact same pattern that we saw happening there on Facebook on a weekly time frame. So this was that buy that I had, and then it had those three highs where the momentum was shifting again. So this was one of those bail and reverse situations. So it had a really nice, strong reversal coming out of that. And we had a very similar thing happen here just this week, yesterday actually, on Facebook. I was puttering around looking um, for new trades heading into the end of the week. Oh, things were getting kind of slow. I was kind of getting a little bit bored actually. And came across Facebook and noticed that we had a really – decent trading range, trading channel going on in the morning. And here I want to show you a little bit of that tricky Fibonacci extension here where we can go from the low and I use the first pivot high and then the last pivot low. Now again, you, what you could have done is you could go to the absolute high and the absolute low and that would also give you decent Fibonacci extensions that you can use. And the levels will fall pretty close to what you see here. I like to put a little bit more emphasis on the last portion of 
a channel though, so that's why you'll often see me using that last low as opposed to the absolute highs or lows. Uh, a problem you can run into with absolute highs and lows is that uh, you can get some flushes that take place, so it can distort the overall congestion, whereas this kind of plays more into what's going on in this overall move itself. So here it was a really strong move up heading into the open, really nice and momentum continuation pattern on the gap, and fell so into that trading channel over noon. So I took the break out here going, it, it was a little bit before noon, and right away the momentum was obviously slower than it had been in the morning because the morning was partially a gap and then even then the continuation was also pretty strong. So that told me right away I'm, I'm really going to have a hard time getting that 100% equal move target coming out of this. So what I watch for is I watch for things like uh, two wave continuation. So oftentimes coming out of a trading channel you'll get two or three waves. Here you even saw it with just that pause in the morning before the continuation and then the base. So here was that first pause right at that 38.2, which of course was previous highs too. 38.2 is very commonly um, previous highs. And was able to push through that to that 61.8% level. So this is where I ended up taking off some of my gains on this one because I also wanted to keep the larger picture in mind, and that larger picture is down here in the lower right-hand corner. This is the daily time frame, and what you're seeing on that daily time frame is that momentum shift. It had the strong run up in January, and then since then, it's struggled, and it's been a lot of overlap from one day to the next without any real break at all, and this risks a rather substantial correction on the downside if we get some changing in the momentum intraday. We saw that a couple of days ago with a pretty decent flush. Well, it's setting up that we could easily see another secondary flush here pretty soon. So keeping that in mind, that also made me realize that, okay, we have the same type of thing going on here that we did in Adobe and that we did in Facebook. So these are all different time frames taking place over multiple years in different securities. So we've got everything from the Forex market to looking at individual securities to looking at individual stocks. And we go back and look at this, and here's the second move into 76.4. So now we have two highs. And the shift again with the third high. Now, by this point, I was already out of this position. I took the rest off with the second second move here. But if you had already, if you had still been holding this and hoping for a little bit more, this is the clue that you would use to get out of the rest of it. Basically, this formation here, you've got it's kind of a uh, combo between a head and shoulders and a momentum reversal because the shoulder here is a little bit lower than the top high here. So you look at left head, left shoulder rather, head, right shoulder. Um, and it's also the momentum reversal because you've got your three evenly spaced highs with kind of this upside wedge formation. So that triggers the short right here as this channel breaks and as that channel gives way. Usually what I want to see for that trigger for that short is if this congestion is lasting about as long as these previous moves, that tells me that it's ready. And it helps prevent you from getting in a little bit too early. Some, some traders will run into that struggle. So there's the breakdown. Now, I don't, didn't get a chart that grabbed the rest of this, but this can continue falling throughout the, the afternoon, it ended up making it back into uh, these previous lows fairly easily by 1,500. So, you know, what I want to show you today is how we've got these Fibonacci extension levels, and they are great at helping you look at these target zones, but they're not something that you use in and of themselves. Momentum is critical 
much understanding. Are these target levels going to hit? Do I need to change how I exit at them? Um, do I need to even look at reversal strategies that might develop coming following uh, a slower than average breakout? Could this actually lead to a reversal? For example, this whole pattern here, and this can very easily be taking place as a bear flag within a much larger downtrend where you've got an initial bounce. That will be the second move. So this momentum reversal here is actually the trigger for a much larger bear flag that is a part of a larger downtrend way over here. So all of these things come together and play together. When we're looking at taking gains, like I said earlier, I usually have an exit on the book in the target zones. Usually, it's slightly under the exact price target. So, like, if a price target is 100, I'll have it at 98.94, just to be able to get a fill most easily. And uh, sometimes I'll go and do some manually, manual adjustments as it's approaching that level. But having it on the books just protects me against, you know, anything unforeseen. And... Secondly, watch relative momentum or pace very, very closely. The rapid moves that still fall sharp, short of a target, they're going to tend to try to retest and offer a second chance if it's the first test of a target zone. For example, if you have 100 and it runs straight into 100, but only hits like 99.96, and your, your exit was at 99.97. Don't worry about that. Oftentimes, that's going to go and try to go for a second attempt. You only have to worry about it if the momentum is already shifting when it's going into that target zone. If it's already starting to slow, then you're going to have trouble. Now, if you have a stronger than average momentum move as it's going into that target and it is just clipping along, then you might want to drop that target on the books and start to look for those additional support or resistance levels on uh, other multiple time frames to see what your next target level could be. What could you get as the next, um, next move, basically? And of course, always keep the bigger picture in mind. So we only looked at just a couple of things that are key in my type of market analysis. Now, my strategy is based upon what I call the building blocks of price development. And this is what they look like. We look at momentum. We look at support and resistance levels. And I try to keep them simple, like easy to use tools, not overload your charts that are going to give you uh, multiple conflicting signals that you're just not going to be able to see the underlying price action because the underlying price action is key. If you can learn to read underlying price action, you really don't need any other indicators. Indicators are great to help you visualize some things as you're, especially if you're learning or you're just kind of trying to second guess yourself, but don't clutter up your charts with too many of them. Then you get the confusion over, you know, which ones are working the best under certain circumstances because indicators don't all work the same under the same circumstances. This, however, does. Once you learn this system and how to read the actual charts themselves, then you really can get, get rid of a lot of other things. And you can build your own alerts based upon these. You know, I have a lot of traders that have gone and built their own alert systems. They've gone and worked with places like TradeStation to put those into their system to help trigger, you know, give them uh, alerts on things that are forming and developing according to it. But the other things we're looking at are trend placement. So where is the strategy taking place in the larger trends? Time development and time development is massively, massively important. We looked at that a little bit here when I talked about, um, you know, how much time did each of these corrections take compared to previous corrections. That is a very key factor in looking at what type of gains you're going to get, as well as are you in a position too early? Did you jump into a bull flag? 
before the bull flag has had time to really sort itself out and then hence get flushed out only to see it go and hit the target you were originally expecting in the first place. I'm sure that's never happened to anybody here, right? <laughs> yeah, I, nobody wants to fess up. <laughs> well, it happened to me all the time. And so that was one of the things that helped me realize how important time development was. Uh, and then, of course, we've got volume. You know, some of, um, some of you are, are Forex traders. There are some platforms that do have volume on them. Um, so, you know, you can look out for some of those. They can help. You don't absolutely need volume. But it's certainly a nice tool to have as an additional confirmation tool, like we saw with those momentum reversals. When the volume drops off, that's really the best time to enter those positions. Now, I have a bit of a special for you guys here today. I'm going to just talk about this here for a couple minutes, and then I'll get back into answering some of your questions you have. So I have some really great classes that I've put together that um, I'm very proud of. I think that they get into a lot of the details that a lot of traders miss and will give you information that you can immediately take and start working with like as soon as you watch these videos. So the first one is the top three trading strategies you've been taught that will lose you money. And this goes into things like bull flags, like head and shoulders. These are strategies that pretty much every book on technical analysis will teach you. What it doesn't teach you, however, is the nuts and bolts that go into those strategies and how to read the things like the momentum and the time development. and. So you might be taking what looks like a perfect head and shoulders pattern only to get completely trapped and it ends up being a continuation to a larger bull trend. So this course looks at those strategies and it details the things that you have to pay attention to that will indicate changes within those strategies and how you can correct those strategies to make them actually work solidly every time. The next class is three signs of trend exhaustion. And that really builds upon today's lesson very well because it helps talk about the different things to look for as a trend is nearing completion, where you're going to get that exhaustion and how to read that exhaustion and put it into practice. So looking at those signs of trend exhaustion and what to do with them. So these courses are both video courses. Now, there are other courses I have online as well, and I'll mention those here in a second. But this one, each of these courses, we retail it for 99 But uh, for today, you guys can get both of them for 97 this weekend only, and you'll also get the recording from today's class today's session. So I know Jeanette is sending out uh, the, the recording through Trade Thirsty as well, but we will also have it recorded and put on our site with this. So you can just log on and view it anytime. So once uh, it's no longer available for them, you will still be able to have constant access to it. So you'll get all three of those for 97 and the link for that is TonyHanson.com backslash trade thirsty. So I will put that up here as well as my email address. So my email address is Tony at trading from Main .com. So Tony at trading from Main .com will reach me directly if you have any questions on anything at all. I do have a new course that will be coming up here within the next month as well. And anybody that purchases any of my previous courses does get a special discount on any additional courses you purchase. So for example, if you purchase these, you will get a discount on any additional courses because I, I have a question here uh, regarding that. So 
if you would like any of the other ones, just chat me up, send me a message, and I will get you to the correct link for that discount, or it's actually a coupon code, and you will have that advantage. So uh, another course that will be in development here over the next month is one based upon a boot camp that I did a few years ago. And it has to do with um, following trades from beginning to end. And it's a trade management boot camp, basically. So it goes over trades from the moment they start to develop, first recognizing initial signs of development, going into uh, managing it as they change and as they unfold, how to correctly adjust stops, targets, how to reverse positions, all of that fun stuff. So that was a boot camp I did a few years ago. You can keep an eye out on that in the month or two ahead. I'm updating all of the charts using all new trades, so that will be fun. And then, of course, I talked about that um, Fibonacci Mastery course which is by far my most in-depth course. And there are some free videos on my website that can give you introduction. The videos are actually pretty long. I think they're about an hour each. Um, so you can get some extra information on Fibonacci and a little bit of an overview for Fibonacci. Uh, the class is Fibonacci Mastery. And we can actually just show you the web page here quick make that a little easier so you can see what I'm talking about. One moment. So here is that course. So it gets into Fibonacci arcs and fans and all kinds of goodies. And not only that, but it goes into all of those building blocks that I talked about. So it's a self-paced course. There's a couple. It's divided into weeks, as you can see. So I put it together as basically a college-level course. So you can go and do it at your own pace. And it includes the follow-up videos as well that had the live market commentary. So a lot of information here. Feel free to go check that out. There's a free video over here, and then there's some extra free videos uh, if you sign up for the extra free videos. And uh, the Fibonacci course actually has a, a textbook that goes along with it too that is my market timing playbook that goes into all of my strategies. And it's just like a handy reference guide to keep next to you going over the different setups that I use. So this course here, 97 for all three, the top three strategies you've been taught that will lose you money, three signs of trend exhaustion, and today's recording, accessible anytime. We are not having any expiration on these courses. So if you want, I believe there's an automatic they automatically expire online after, I think it's like three years, but all you have to do is email us and we turn it right back on. So you don't have to have actually worry about, um, if you take a break like I did, <laughs> and you need to come back, you will still have all of the material. I've even had people come and say, I really want to retake your course. I started it. I didn't finish it. It's been so long. Can I buy it again? It was so good. I'm like, well, that's awesome that you want to buy it again, but you don't have to. <laughs> Here, <laughs> go log in. So you definitely don't worry about losing access. Um, let me see here on these other questions. My cat screen is scrolled on me. Okay. What about software that has two points for Fibonacci retracement? How do you compensate? Okay, so the, the Fibonacci retracement level is a little bit different than Fibonacci extension. Um, what you can do, I don't have, let's see, I don't have my charts open. What I do with those is, 
I take it, I kind of just sort of mm, finagle it where, let me draw here. Let's say, here's our little downtrend, and we're looking to add the Fibonacci retracement levels. And we've got a bear flag that we're looking at. So if you're looking at the Fibonacci on these, what you're usually looking at, the retracement levels are people are looking at drawing it from the high to the low, and then they're looking to see, well, how much retracement do we have happening in here? Now, what you can do to kind of finagle getting that 100% is you can draw it to a point where it's a halfway in this range. So let's say you've got highs of 50, lows of, 20, uh, lows of 40. This would be like 45. So you draw your point from here to there, and that could give you your extension number that would give you that same zone. So that's kind of a way that you could finagle it, <laughs> kind of quick and dirty. I could show you easier options on my charting, but I don't have that up here on this system. You might actually, um, I'm not sure, that one of those free videos might have some information as well. If you go to my YouTube channel, there's more there's more on the there as well. I'm just reading here. Are these classes videos similar to today's class? The ones that are on this offer, these top three strategies, these are each about an hour. One of them I think might be 90 minutes long. So they're very similar to today, uh, but it's not the live. They're not live um, classes. They're actually ones that I put together and recorded. I guess I would record them live, but not to an audience. <laughs> so they're very good. I've done them as expo um, presentations as well over the years and kind of just perfected and honed them for the online courses. Now, most of my other courses are longer. <laughs> People are actually amazed with how long a lot of the courses that I have are. I was talking to my admin about doing the trade management one and the current boot camp was four hours. He's like, um, maybe we need to break it up or <laughs> cut it down a little bit. <laughs> I like you guys to know a lot, but I like to keep it simple. So I speak very plainly uh, using typical conversational English that I could explain these things to my children, basically. I'm not, I'm not a big fan of people that, that try to talk above my head using a lot of terms that I might not know. I mean, obviously, being in the market now, I know most of everything as it relates to the market, but a lot of people are coming into the market and they don't know a lot of the stuff and are often spoken to as if they should know everything. And that just does not sit very well with me. So I want you to be able to understand everything I'm saying. I want it to be simple for you to follow. And I repeat things in many ways so that if you don't catch it one way, the next time you'll catch it. I love to show examples over multiple time frames, live examples, examples from the past to show the continuity. And really hone in that this system works and it's going to continue to work. Um, a asks, is there a chance of starting a day trading service? <laughs> I actually ran a trading room for about 12 years every day. I was here from sunup to sundown and way past sundown. I lived, breathed, ate, drank the markets and uh, 
I can't do that anymore. <laughs> I'm getting old. <laughs> so if I, I, um, I loved it. I really did. We had a great family, family situation there, and it was really good. And uh, I was talking with Jeanette. She was just amazed because I told her, you know, after five years, we still had over 80% of our original members <laughs> because it was a family situation. And I use a system of market analysis that is really easy once you can learn it. So uh, it, it keeps people around, you know. And um, before I, I took some time off with my illness, uh, what I was doing was I was running a weekly group where we get together and talk about the markets just once a week after the close. Totally uh, during the day, I was running mentoring a couple of uh, days a week. So small group mentoring where we spoke about certain topics for the month and everybody basically was forced to participate. No, no, no. <laughs> Some people are a little bit shy, but I drag people in. I make people show me, how would you read this? What are you thinking? And then help guide them. And, you know, okay, well, that's great. But here, also pay attention to this. And here's what's going on. Here's where you're, you're struggling. And the purpose of that is that you're not only learning from your own mistakes, but you're also learning from other people that are in the mentoring group with you. So that is something that I will be starting up again. Um, and I'll be, I'll be doing the once a week thing too as well. But we're looking at a couple of months out before I get those things rolling. My adventure here today with you guys is actually my first uh, real major speaking gig here since uh, being on medical leave. I had a fun time with Bob Lang a couple of weeks ago. We just chatted about the market, though, not really lessons or anything. Um, but uh, I've got a lot of these coming up, so hopefully I will see you again. I, I've got another session next month, another class I'll be teaching next month, and I love seeing so many familiar familiar faces. I'm tripping all the words. <laughs> so many familiar faces here. I, I, seen so many of you guys so much over the years and I just love having you back and I love the markets and I love teaching so if there's any way I can help you anything that you are interested in learning let me know I probably already have something that I can steer you towards if you're having trouble in one area or another